unplug this. Hold on. Okay, I'm live. I'm live on Facebook. I'm live on in no, I'm live on TikTok. I'm live on in person here in Alberton, Ontario. And I'm juggling. Let me just see. Is that my camera? Oh, I gotta change my camera. Hold on. Uh because I want you guys to have the great camera. Hold on, hold on. This camera is somehow come unplugged. And technical difficulties, cat technical difficulty difficulties. Can you find this one, Linda, and find me where it's plugged in? Sorry. The good news is I can edit this out for the replay. Those of you who are watching this live, I apologize. I'm trying to juggle some um, chainsaws because I wanted a specific camera in case you guys, um, in case you guys need a demonstration. So I do have dogs lurking about here. And, you know, when there's technical difficulties, just have a little coffee. That's what I say. So there's a question that I have. If you'll leave it in the in the uh, comment section, here's a question. TikTok people, let me know if that is, oh, it's backwards. I'm going to have to, I'm not, I'm not that good that I can figure this out on the fly, TikTok. Here's what I'm going to do. Mm, I, I'm going to have to read it to you guys. Question is, if somebody just was to say, you have to pick the number one factor, now you could say, well, there's a lot of factors, but if you had five factors to choose from, your number one factor that is influencing great dog training, would it be, I'm going to show you, I can show it to you backwards. I don't know what else I can do. I can hold the mirror up. Is it number one, the dog's temperament? So the genetics, the dog, yeah. Any of you guys who are brilliant at doing uh, this TikTok live, let me know how you can get that to happen because I don't know how. So is it the dog's genetics? Is that is it number one? Number two, the experience of the person doing the dog training. Is it is that the number one factor? Is it the quality of the cookies that you that you have at you available? Is it um, your plan and your execution, or is it your dominance and you're consistently uh, applying your dominance? So one, two, three, four, or five. Let me know. Um, you need to mirror text on a card backwards. Yeah, okay. Cassie from Texas, thank you for that. I just don't know how to do that. So uh, that's why you're getting, you're getting backwards. I can't write. I'm dyslexic. I could write that backwards quite easily. Okay, so let me know in the comments. What do you think? What do you think it is? So uh, we've got a couple for number one, temperament of the dog. A couple for the quality of what, what was number a lot of for number four. A lot of you guys are picking number four, which is plan and execution. And I have an elastic somewhere around here because it's getting hot already. Uh, an elastic number one, another one for dogs temperament. Number three, quality of the cookies. I need an elastic for my hair. Yes. And there's, there's a bunch of them around here. I always leave one around here. Uh, okay. We've got some number twos. So we got number ones. We got number twos. We got number three. And I got, we got number four. Is there anybody on here picking five? I mean, all, all opinions are welcome. And there's a great Canadian uh, singing group. They're called the arrogant worms. They have a line from one of their songs. We're not saying that we're better. We're just saying we're less worse. So you can pick dominance theory if you want. I'm not saying I'm better. 
uh, I, I, I'm saying that I would be slightly worse, slightly less worse. Okay, so I think that they're, they're all over. Um, and I'm going to share with you why I think, oh, I can see more comments. Oh, a lot of number twos on TikTok. So a lot of you are picking number two. Uh, and, and the people on TikTok, serious disadvantage in that you did not get to see the, the card other than if you could read backwards. If you want to jump over to YouTube or um, Facebook, you'll be able to see this live and nothing else is going to be backwards. There's a, What's going to happen today, there's a bunch of questions that are have been asked um, to do with our brand new series that we're hosting on doggy flicks can we have some love for doggy flicks my team has done an amazing job building this platform for everybody um no pamela go back to facebook do not stay over here on tiktok the experience will be much better on facebook i promise you you'll be able to read unless you're into reading backwards um so yeah it's it'll be much much easier on over there on on um either Facebook or, or, or YouTube zone. or in the learning zone, right in the learning zone. If you go to doggyflix.com forward slash learn, even if you're not a member, you can, um, you can, you can join in and watch this. All right. Okay. I'm going to go through what I think about these. Number one, temperament. There's a lot of people who have amazing, like I think in sports, amazing dogs and it's just like the dogs naturally knew how to do things the membership's 100 percent free folks 100 percent free and um i just do this my team and i are dedicated to help everybody learn so there's a lot you get these these people that will get these amazing dogs and they might excel at a sport and then they never have another dog that um does well and so i think that the dog's temperament can make somebody that doesn't have a lot of skill in dog training look brilliant, which is why there are, unfortunately, in dog sports, there are people who get a dog and at six or nine months old, if it's not working out for them, they, they rehome it, run it on, as we used to say in the horse world, and they will get another dog. And so um, if you're looking for a dog training mentor, this isn't what today's podcast is about, or uh, live is about, but it's kind of turned to that. Be be aware of, I'm not saying anybody who gets rid of a dog is a bad person because I think sometimes they're just not right matches, but if that's their method of getting a, a great dog, I, I there's a lot of us out there who have never rehomed a dog in our life. The dogs come into our house. We recognize they're here to teach us something. We learn lessons and then we share it with the rest of the world, like all you folks watching this. So dog temperament, important factor. I do not think it's the number one thing to have a well-trained dog. Um, the owner's experience, again, a somebody who, like myself, I can train dogs a lot easier than other people who don't have the experience that I have. But here's the really cool thing. You could take, let's say somebody who's excelled in dog training. They're, they're teaching their own classes. And they would come into, say, our recallers program. Um, or even the Doggy Flicks the doggy flick series we have on right now, people who have experience in dog training, some of them, and then people who um, are brand new to dog training, first time dog. And, and guess what? The people who have the first time, the first time dog often end up with better results than those who are experienced. Why? Because once people have the experience, they're less open to trying something new. They're kind of locked in their um, their, their mindset as to how dog training should happen. And so of course we do things really differently. And so I don't think that it's the owner's experience, the quality of cookies, somebody picked that. Yeah, that's a huge impact. So if you are trying to train a dog and you have no, and your cookie and you're, you have cookies that have zero value to the dog, then would you, you might think, oh, it's impossible to train, but guess what? It's not because there are other reinforcers that you can find like, um, bizarre ones. My dog, this number one reinforcer is a chance to run. Um, my first dog, her number one reinforcer was a rock in my uh, terrier that I had a lot of confidence issues with her number one. Um, yes, my, my dog's name is still this. 
And decaf, my terrier who had some confidence issues, her number one reinforcer was a fly swatter. So cookies, not necessarily it. Number four, plan and execution. Well, I think I think that is the most important because if you're following a flawed plan, you might get incremental incremental change in your dog's behavior over the course of a year. But if you've got a successful, effective, efficient plan, you're going to see exponential. You should be seeing exponential change when you're training your dog. And if you're not, then you've got to look at, number one, we all have these um, cameras and, and I, or iPod, cameras on our phones, right? I'm going to try and pull you guys here off of, look at that. So you were just hanging on to this. You were sitting on this little tripod. Everybody's, I bet you I've got a thousand of those. This is my more robust tripod. Um, they aren't all quite that robust, but everyone, everyone who owns a dog, it, you have to have a tripod because, because guess what? If you have a phone that has a camera on it, you definitely want a tripod. Dog training is a mechanical skill. That's a quote from my, from my mentor, Bob Bailey. It's true. hundred percent true, which means the only way you can improve, the best way to improve any mechanical skill is to see your mechanics so you can get better. And so, um, but you, you, if you're working from a flawed plan, it doesn't matter how much you can see your mechanics, it's never going to get better. Never. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there was a bunch of questions that came into us and, uh, I, and I thank you guys for playing along with my Yep. Somebody picked number five. That's hundred percent. Okay. There we, we had answers from one to five on this and, um, thank you for your, for your input. I don't happen to believe dominance. I'm one of the, the dog trainers who don't believe in dominant dominance theory. I just, I have never prescribed to it. And my dogs have been amazing family pets and brilliant dogs to compete in. So uh, and I've had dogs of different breeds and I've had started with rescue dogs. I started with puppies. So um, I, I don't happen to believe that, that that is true. Okay. So I'm going to jump right in right now and I'm going to um, tell you a story. I'm going to actually going to answer the first question. We have questions here. I'm going to go to the first question and uh, answer that one. So I'm going to find my questions first. Here they go right up at the top. Um, while you guys are waiting for me to find my uh, question answer, if you are not a member of doggy flicks and you would like to become a member, it's a hundred percent free. And if you go to doggy flicks dot slash doggy flicks, doggy flicks dot com forward slash learn. And if I could, I'm going to try and write that backwards for those people that are on <laughs> I don't, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm going to go, um, uh, I'm just going to do the, um, spell. Luckily the, uh, the, I'm just going to uh, doggy. Mm, see how this, see how this dyslexic did on doing writing backwards. <laughs> Not too bad, right? <laughs> Doggyflicks.com forward slash learn. I didn't have room to write all that. And, and I don't know why all of a sudden when I'm writing backwards, my writing turns into that of a three-year-old. It happens. It happens. Okay. Um, I've got a bunch of questions that were asked in our first series on Doggy Flicks. It's called The Connected Dog. And I am going to, uh, I'm going to share with you what these, the, the questions are. So this is our first one from Joe M. And um, you know what I'm going to do with you guys on TikTok? I'm going to turn you around. I don't know. Whoever's watching this on TikTok, it, tell me if this was a really bad idea. This way you get to see the, oh, you get to see the questions and back, backwards. So, And if that doesn't work, and all I can say, if you're on TikTok, to jump on over. So Maybe somebody on my team, I think Aaron is over there, can tell me if that looks like really, really bad from your point of view. Oh, okay, keep, uh, there we go, wait. Hold on. Yeah, you're helping. Except why isn't it moving? I'm moving it the wrong way. 
Okay. So I think that's, we're roughly right over there. And, and tell me if it's not, you can come over and fix it, Linda. Okay. First question from Joe M. So, uh, so a lot of you guys sent in very long, long detailed questions. And here's the thing. Um, this is called uh, StreamYard, what I'm using. And it only allows me to, to type out a question with 200 characters. And so I had to like, when I say I, I say the team and mostly it was Linda Orton Hill, L-O-H. So um, I had to kind of squash down your question. So Joe said, asks, he stated his 10 month old border collie had um, something in his ear or something. And then it had to get some drops and had an unpleasant visit with the vet and then became very, very shy. So the question was the dog, the puppy is now suspicious where normally he was very good natured puppy. And can the, um, the collar grab, or, or is this going to be the dog's fate? Or can the, the collar grab game, that's the first game in Netflix, can that make a difference to the puppy? So now that you've got that all set up, I'm going to move that, Linda, sorry. Because here's what. I don't like reading and looking over at people. So you're going to have to come, come back. Is that still okay? Yeah. Okay, good. So... Um, uh, and, and to answer Joe's question, I want to share something with you. And it is uh, something that happened this morning. I was in the gym and it was beautiful outside. Like the, It was just a gorgeous morning. And I thought, and uh, my youngest dog, this, or my second youngest dog, she had come into the gym with me. And I'm like, oh, I want to get a picture of her. Um, no, we have a tech challenge. So uh, I, I wanted to get a picture of her. So I ha I opened the doors. Is that better, Linda? Uh, so you can move that around and uh, try and see what they're seeing. But there, that's good. And so this is what I got. So this is, I'm going to. Super important that we meet the dogs where they are at. So important. And I forgot to do one thing that's really important. I'm going to get back to it in a second. So if your dog is when you're playing the collar grab, they're going, I hate you. I don't want to do this. Then we have to read that body language and say, hey, buddy, I'm going to meet you where you're at. So you're going to be on a leash. I'm just going to touch the leash and I'm going to, and I'm going to say cookie and bring you a cookie. And if that's too much, I'm just going to stand around and say cookie, give you a cookie until your ears are up and you're going, oh, I can do that. Then I'm going to grab the leash and say cookie. And you're going to go meet the dog where they're at. I hope, I hope let me know in the comments if that makes sense, if, if that makes sense to you guys. Okay. Like some of you say that you couldn't hear. Um, oh, when I went off, it muted the, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm technically not great about this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go a little longer than I anticipated. I'm going to get all your questions answered, but I'm going to give away a prize right now. This is, we've had too many, too many difficulties. So uh, I'm giving away a prize. 
And so what I'm going to do is let's go crazy. How about, how, how about a Kato board? Does a Kato board sound good to anyone? Anybody watching this? Would anybody, could you be using a Kato board out there? We're starting off with a bang. This is me apologizing to you because we've had so many technical difficulties already today. All that you need to do is you need to, if you're watching this on Facebook, you need to just share the stream, copy the link, put it on your Facebook page and say, Susan's going live. She's had some mess ups, but I think she's going to be really good. Come and join us. And um, you don't even have to say any of that. You just have to say, Susan's live, come join us. That's your number one thing. Number two, if you're watching this on YouTube or TikTok, share the, the, the stream anywhere, anywhere in your social media. And then what you have to do then is come back and write in the comments, shared, and write where you shared it so our team can follow up that you actually did share it. And then we're going to do a random draw at the end of today because sometimes things don't go well. And you know what? It's all about reinforcing people for paying attention and for playing along the game, even if I'm a little bit not good at the technology. I'm going to go back and go back and go back to the gym and tell that story one more time. Meanwhile, you guys can just share that. And here's what else I'm going to do. We're going to do a, uh, we're going to do two runner up people. And I'm giving out because you guys were so kind while I was messing this up. We're going to give out two be kind stickers that you can put on your coffee mug or your bumper sticker or your training bag or your dog crate, whatever you like. Okay. So I know what I did wrong. So we're going to, we're going to go back and we're going to try this one more time. Okay. So this, it was su just such an important thing. And I'm going to say with you guys, I'm going to give away another prize at the end of today. So we're going to name the, the, the winner of the shares, I'm going to name that at the end of, uh, of today. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to share with you how you can win another prize. And that will be happening on our Facebook page. And you know what? Here's what we're going to share for another, uh, our next prize. Hold on. Uh, let's go crazy and say we're sharing a propel. So at the, there's going to be two things I'm giving away today. The share people are getting, whoever wins the shares is getting a Kato board. And then uh, we'll give away two stickers for the Be Kind stickers as well. And at the end, I'm going to tell you how you can win the next one. And it has to do with listening to, other than the technical difficulties, were there any aha moments for you during this presentation? And write them down and I'll tell you where to share them at the end. Okay. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the story of the gym because it was just so important. So I was working out and here's what I'm going to do. Stop. Okay, that's it. Okay, so you're just going to have me poking around. Hey, it's me, Susan. Tell the story. But you can still hear me now. Yeah, you're, you're behind the picture. But yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I'm back again, right? Everybody write in the comments, you're back again. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm back. Okay. So this is what this looked like when I tried to take her picture this morning in the gym. And she, you could tell she was not happy at all about sitting in front of this beautiful drop, drop with the beautiful leaves that I wanted to take a picture of her in the background. Her body language is saying hell to the no, not interested in playing. And so what I did instead of like, I took one picture and I went, okay, this isn't good. I, you know, I wanted to work out. I wanted to take my dog's picture, but what's most important is I want my dog to have a great life. So I, I, I always keep cookies in the gym for the dogs. And I, I gave her her search cue. I threw the cookies in the gym, got her to jump back outside because it was wet. And I thought maybe she just didn't want to be out in the wet. She's a border collie. That would be weird. But so I just did some search games back and forth. And the search game was what we taught in uh, the connected dog, which is on doggy flicks today. That was today's game. And so then I put her back up and I, and I went to take her picture again. Now, her body language is better, right? Her neck is up, her head's up, her ears are up, but she's still not comfortable. She's looking around and you could say, oh, she's hunting. No, she's not. That's not the kind of dog she is. And 
My interpretation was I'm not comfortable turning my back to what might come up behind me. So that's great. We just did some search games out onto the deck. And that gave me this dog, pardon the pun. So now she's like, yeah, we can have our picture taken. And I'm sharing all of this with you because I really want you, this is just so important for your success in dog training and anything you're doing. You meet the dog where they're at. You train the dog that's in front of you. Meaning the, the number one picture wasn't a dog who was emotionally available to be trained. And I could have said, listen, suck it up. Hey, 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 pay attention. Ears up. Give me your... I could have made her give me her attention to get that picture, but I would have then had a dog who maybe what would have been the connection between us? What would have been the trust in us? So whenever it is that you're training, whatever it is you're training, if you're in a different environment, sometimes it's not obvious the why, but you just work on things that you know could be successful. And that's why some of the games that we're teaching in the Connected Dog Series are great evaluators of the dog you've got right now. You know what? This one doesn't look so pretty in the back. I need to get rid of that one. That's my to-do list, by the way, if you're interested. I make my to-do lists on big pieces of paper. There's another one over there you might see later if I do a demo. Okay, so meet your dog where they're at train the dog in front of you. And that is exponentially going to make it easier for you to train your dog. Does that make sense now that you actually heard the entire story? All right. Um, there's questions. I guess my team's going to answer some of the questions that are on that Facebook. Okay. So I'm going to go back to now we're going to go to our next question. What is the big thing you are working on? Oh no, that's not it. That's, that's my question too. You guys, never mind. Here it is uh, from Patty. Susan talks about the transfer of value all the time. I don't seem to grasp it. Will it happen automatically by following and doing the training? Patty, yes, it will. And thank you for putting it that way. A lot of times the transfer of value does not happen because of people's mechanics, which is why in the Connected Dog series, we were very intentional. I actually did the videos and then redid the videos so that I was really super clear with the steps that you take. And if you follow the steps and we've got the, the, um, handouts, the, the game book, well, I printed out my game book. It's downstairs. The game book for you that you, you, we actually show the pictures of the things that we want you to have. No, not the playbook, the game book, the game book for today's game or yesterday's game. So, so we give you the video because some people love to learn from video. Some people prefer um, pictures and words. So we give you, we, we're treating you just like you're one of our students in our online classes. You get a great video with, that gives you the step-by-step. -step. Then you get the, the game book that gives you pictures to see the key moments. And then you get the written. But I can't go there and train you in your own home. I'd love to. Because some of you people live in some amazingly exotic places. And I mean, I love where I live, but Hamilton, Ontario, Canada has never in the history of the world ever been described as exotic. And I'd love to come help you train, but I can't. And so I rely on you to set up that tripod and to video yourself. That's how you're going to, you've got a great plan. I gave you the plan. It's your execution on that plan. And that is what results in the transfer of value or not. Transfer of value is the ultimate. That's what we're all heading for. Oops, sorry about you guys on TikTok. I almost knocked you over. Apologize for that. Transfer of value is what we all are headed for. That's what we want. That's when a dog, um, you've got a lot of layers of behaviors, activities be between the food or the toy and you. And so I can take my dogs for a walk around the field without any cookies or toys on me. That's 100% okay. All right. Um, again, I'm going to check in with you guys. Let me know if this makes sense to you. I am a Canadian. All right. And so if the uh, what I love about what Patty said here, will it happen automatically by following and doing the training? Patty, you couldn't have said it better. Brings a tear to my eye. Thank you. Yes, that's when it happens. Okay, Kathy Cole. Cole. Oh, Kathy M. asks, Koa was so excited about knowing I had a special treat that I don't know that she even noticed that I was grabbing her collar. Do you think 
it will still create a CER. It, it may not, Kathy. So two things. Number one, I would go back in with a lower value reinforcer right now. And what you could do is like if you were playing this in a room, then you're going to plant reinforcement at different places around your room. And you're going to go near that reinforcement. Then you're going to do the actions as described in the game, grab the collar, and then you're going to say your marker word cookie, uh, and then just grab that re high value reinforcement. That's the way you can make sure that it actually comes together for you. But in the meantime, use some lower value because some dogs just are cray cray about reinforcement, kind of like I am with the vegan chocolate chip cookies. Like I can't think of anything else. I think I smell them cooking downstairs. We're going to make this bow. Just kidding. Um, Victoria, I know we can't let her see the treat and I'm not to move my hand, but can't she smell and anticipate it? Does that have impact? I'm using dehydrated liver. It may. So just as I said to Kathy, you want to, you can, you can, uh, you can, do it like putting it around the room. You can use lower value reinforcement. You can even carry the cookie in your hand and um, walk around with it until, as Gene Donaldson calls it, a rule out. Until they're like, I smell a cookie. And you can tell them, they're like, I'm getting the cookie, I'm getting the cookie, I'm getting the cookie. Until they're going, uh, I don't think I'm getting the cookie. And they just kind of chillax. Then you can go for the call to grab because they've decided they're not getting the cookie. And that's the moment you go, let's play this game. All right. Just some dogs are crazy about food. And, and the thing is, once you've played this once, most dogs are going to go, I like this. I like this game. And that's okay. Just walk, walk around the room for a little bit before you grab for the collar one more time. Okay. The transfer value will happen. The thing about classical conditioning guys, we can't guarantee what is being conditioned at that moment, which is why you want to play this in different environments and different rooms. Sometimes, you know, you could start it just sitting on the ground. You can grow it to different locations. Erica says, how do you hide treats or make it so they don't see? So I think I covered that. Uh, great question, Erica. Obviously that was a com that's a common question here. Um, Lindy is so focused on my cookie hand. So maybe Darlene, you could put the, get a bait bag or I, I, you know what? I live with the hoodie. And so get yourself a nice shape by dog hoodie. That would be a great thing to train in. I think there'd be some extra transfer value when you're training with a shape by dog hoodie. I digress. You know, I'm kidding. Of course. Right. Maybe not really sort of. So mix up where the, where the reinforcement is. So, um, if they are obsessing about your hands, you could, you could have it in your hoodie, but there's that extra hitch, right? You get an extra hitch in your giddy up. You are going to be conditioning something different. And by that, I mean, if you're doing grab the collar, go to the bait bag and then, uh, and then say cookie. Well, nothing. Remember you've poisoned. So grab the collar, say cookie, then go to your kangaroo pet. Do you guys still call it a kangaroo pouch? Like it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm old. Never mind me. The pouch in front of your hoodie. If you then re, so, so you reach, so you want to get it out of your hands, but you grab the collar, say cookie, and then go in. You actually are conditioning the, the hand going in and that's okay. Just move that position around. Like I said, sometimes leave the cookie on a counter. Sometimes have it in a bait bag. Sometimes have it in a kangaroo pouch. We get people right into customer happiness. Susan said kangaroo pouch on the podcast. What is that? Even my team didn't know. That's when I knew I was old. Is there a safe way to give treats? Uh, my He tends to snap at the treats and nip my fingers. So you can condition a, a gentle way that they take the treat. That would be something different. Um, you can just present it on an open palm would be the best. Pretend he's a horse. That would be the best. And I would also maybe just go to some lower value treat because you've got a dog who's like dogs will snap like that. If you notice a dog that's afraid if a dog is getting more aroused and they're a little fearful, they'll either not take the cookies at all. That's when they're really over, over the top or they take it and they snap at you. So sometimes dogs get overexcited just because they're getting such good cookies. So go to something that is lower in value and that, that will help you as well. Um, 
And I don't know if I've ever done a podcast about how to get a dog to take a treat nicely, but that could be a, a future topic. Uh, Kristen says, my dog thinks I'm asking for a hand target when I take their collar grab. Uh, they let me grab their collars, but I wonder if it's a problem. You know what, Christian? You found my magic. I always teach a puppy a hand touch first because that makes the collar grab so much easier. So if I have a new puppy or a rescue dog that's in, I love to teach the hand target because then when I go to reach for the collar, there's already been a positive condition and emotional response to the sight of my hand. So you're not doing anything wrong. It's a perfectly fine, not a bad thing at all. Carrie, if I'm aiming to play this game four times, how long do or should I wait in between sessions? You know what? If you're doing it four times a day, I would try and space it out equally like you do it like before breakfast when you're waiting for the coffee to brew. You can do it when you uh, before you leave for work. You can do it when you get home from work. You can do it when you're brushing your teeth. Remember, we're, 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 we're attaching these two habits that you already do. Any Wordle players, players out there? I do. I do. I started playing Wordle. So, um, yeah, always do dog training before Wordle. It's like if you're going to do something like this, you've got to do something else. All right. Um, yeah, so there's no, you must wait this long, but it's always great to give the dog's brain a break, 100%, especially when working on well, any kind of dog training, but conditioning. Um, is there an optimum number of times you should repeat the game each, each day? I would say meet the dog where they're at. So for some of the dogs, I, like if I have a rescue dog, I might only do that and this is part of how they get to know me. I might only do it a few times until their ears come up on their head and their tails. You know, I love this game. Then um, I like to, I like to play it in one location and then move to another and play it in another location. So I might do, I don't know. Once they've been conditioned, it's something you can play all day long, right? Anytime you're going to say, hi, buddy, reach for the collar, give them a scratch. You don't even have to give them a cookie. Once they really know the game, it's all reinforcing. So there, there isn't, you know, you don't, don't go crazy. Don't, you want the dog enjoying it and you want there to still be, I'm going to give you a little, a little lesson on conditioning. Swagger's excited because he says she's moving the, I'm going to grab a toy. So if this was what we were going to condition the, uh, you know, let's say it's a clicker. This is the easiest example. Click. And uh, so this is a click, and then I'm going to feed you. Click, feed you, click, feed you. If you do it that fast with click, feed, click, feed, click, feed, click, feed, what happens is in order for conditioning to work really, really well, the thing we're conditioning, in this case, the clicker or reaching for the collar, must come before the food. But when you're doing it really fast, it comes before and after the food. So you're not really getting any conditioning. So space it out. That's my, that's my uh, advice here. How often should we play? I think we talked about how often. Um, I have a five-year-old re rescue who's fearful of the leash. Can I play this game without the leash? Donna, I would recommend you play this game for the leash. So whenever the dog is telling us something, we meet them where they're at. We say, I honor exactly what you're feeling right now. Like, think about it. If somebody, you know, you're having a big boo-hoo, you can tell how emotional I am. And somebody comes up and says, that's no reason, there's no reason to cry here. After you bitch slap them, what do you do? You have no right to tell me what my emotions should or shouldn't be. So if our dog is saying, I'm uncomfortable with that leash. How about we help them be comfortable with that leash? And you can do that. You can just put the leash in a, in a brown paper bag. It can be white. It's all right. It doesn't matter. And you can just leave it on the counter. Just pick it up and then say the word cookie and deliver a cookie. Do that. And when your dog goes, what do you got? Is that my leash? Is that, what you, is that my leash there? You're going to see a difference. But then you can start playing the game. We meet our dogs where they're at. We allow them like I always tell people, I schedule my training. I schedule the goals that I want for my dogs. My dogs dictate that pace. It's none of my business how fast it goes. 100% my dogs that dictate the pace. All right? 
Um, after watching and practicing with him, would it be a good idea to let a few people try the game? Yes, Sam, especially if you have like kids in the house, this is a great way to establish a beautiful relationship with the kids, but anybody that's in the house, this is ideal. Now I wouldn't say, let the UPS guy do it or gal. If your dog's leery of other people, um, but, but people that people that the dog knows yeah, absolutely. Can I use a clicker instead of the word cookie? I would not recommend it. A cookie in this, the word cookie right now is a location specific marker, meaning that the word means you stay where you are. I'm delivering cookies right to your mouth. I'm not going to be delivering a, a toy. I'm not going to be rewarding you with a chance to go for a swim is very specific. The word cookie is about marking that the cookie comes from my hand. And here's, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The jig is up. Here's, I'm going to give you a, a sneak peek where, where we're heading with this. What we all want is we want a dog that we can walk off leash in any kind of distraction. And the dog is just having a great time. They might be sniffing the ground. They might be walking backwards, looking at you. They might even be, if it was my dog uh, and there wasn't anything dangerous around, they might be running up in front and then looking back and then running and chasing each other and then looking back. We're all looking for that connected dog. In order to get that, we need what I'm, what I'm coining environmental neutrality, which is, which, which means if there's bunnies out there, if there's like bunny poop, which some dogs think is like caviar, whatever is out there is white noise. Nothing for you to pay attention because you and I are so connected. It doesn't matter. So our goal, we're all heading towards environmental neutrality. I can take my dogs anywhere. I'm going to give you the most classic uh, extreme example of an environmental neutrality. My dog buzz who I wrote the book Shaping Success about. He was in um, Great Outdoor Games. I guess that's what they called them. ESPN Great Outdoor Games. He was in, it was, he was weaving and another dog that he was competing against came across the field and grabbed him. And he kept trying to weave with this dog on his, on, like, oh, he's like looking at me in between. I was on the other side. Is this another distraction that you're throwing at me here? There is nothing but you and those weed poles as far as Buzzy's concerned. We want every distraction your dog could ever see to be white noise. So what does this have to do with naming a cookie coming to you? Because you've learned two games so far in the Connected Dog series. One says a cookie will be coming from my hand to your mouth. The other is you have permission to eat this cookie off the floor. What we're getting to a place where if you find things on the floor, if you find things on the counter... Did you hear the word cookie? Did you hear the word search? Then they're none of your business. There's no need for you to be concerned about that. If we can get some consistency with where the reinforcement's coming from, then it helps grow your dog's understanding of things down the road, but it also helps eliminate the worry of, was that something I should be trying to steal? Should I try and steal that? Does that make sense to you guys? Leave me a comment. I'm, I'm coming in, coming in to check some of the comments here. I've got some really good questions that we're not on your list when you're ready. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks, Donna. Donna says, yeah, that works. Uh, it's definitely caviar. So we got to get, we got to turn that out into um, environmental neutrality. White noise, everything's white noise. Barbara says, I'm working with a five-year-old. We trained collar to mean put your collar on. Oh, okay. Uh, what word would you suggest for this exercise. I thought about touch. Okay, Barbara, there's just a little confusion right now. So I should have brought one of my, can you grab me one of my, uh, my puppets mm -hmm. for demoing? So let's say this beautiful for my Merle's toy is your dog's collar. Here's the game. We grab the collar. Then we say the word cookie. So we're not naming the action of grabbing the collar. The word cookie is marking. It's, it's, it's like a click. It's like the word yes, except we're only going to use it at times when we are going to deliver a cookie. So uh, I like to use it for body work. 
where my dog, I've got a bunch of cookies in my hands and I don't want them like, oh, is it now? Do I get it now? Do I get it now? No, they're in my hands until I say cookie, boom, you can have it. Or in heel position, you don't have to come out of heel position and wrap around because you see the cookie coming. I said the word cookie, it's coming to you. So it's not, where the word cookie doesn't mean I'm going to grab your collar because we grab the collar first. It's a, oh, Lost sound on Facebook. Okay, I'm coming back to the comments. Can you guys hear me on Facebook? Is that something? Uh, it, the, interrupt, the interruption gave me time to have a little swig of the coffee, so never a bad thing. Okay. Okay, so Barbara, I hope that that makes sense. Um, is there another marker used when the dog progresses to where there is no treat needed. I don't have a word that means I'm going to grab your collar because I mean, I want my dog to see my hand coming towards them as the physical. So there are things in my dog's life that there is a physical cue. You see my hand reaching for you, then you that's, you can come in and start extending your neck. So I don't use a cue for this. Um, and so and so um, the, the, the behavior, if you weren't giving a cookie, you wouldn't say cookie. You would just grab the collar and, hey, attaboy, and give him some love. That's fine. Uh, from Rhonda, my boy gets a little frustrated because we've been working on down lately, so he keeps laying down. I keep working, and he offered something different, but how would you handle this? Uh, I would just keep moving. Right. You notice in the video with that cutie patootie little, I think it was a 13 week care and terrier. There were some mechanical issues you could uh, challenges you could have, but I just kept things fast and the puppy didn't have a chance to do some of those other behaviors like back away. Or, uh, um, she just was like, oh, OK, I get it. because so I was just moving fast. So so if you're walking around and 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 just reach down and grab the collar uh, quickly. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing it this way when using collar grab when we're playing our other recolor games? Sure, Helen. Yeah. Unless you're deciding you're not going to deliver a cookie. You don't always have to deliver a cookie once the dog really has conditioned the condition. I mean, I still, I still with all my dogs, they will often get a cookie when I grab the collar. Not always. And if you have to give me a percentage, I don't know, maybe 25% of the time. I'm guessing. Katrina, as we did more repetitions, he had more relaxed body language. When I would reach and hold his collar, he would often place one or sometimes both paws on my arm. Yeah, no, I do not want. Remember, game within a game. The dogs can be creating those games or we can be creating those games. So if I reach for the collar and he puts his paws on my hand, I would just let go of the collar. Let's just try reaching for the collar and you get, you might want to get down on your dog's level. It sounds like it might be a little dog. So for right now, get down on the, on the floor, reach the collar, pause, stay on the floor, say cookie fast and feed. And if you can't even do that, just do cookie and feed for a few and then grab the collar and say cookie and feed. Uh, what if I used a harness, not a collar for this? Eventually I would do the same thing with your harness, but I would like you to start with the collar. I have a small papillion that wears a harness and a collar. Uh, I know it's papillon people. I just, it's an old joke. Um, we've played by grabbing the front, the front strap on the harness, which is under the chin. Is it okay to continue this way? So there are very specific mechanics. You can morph them eventually into your harness. I would say like after the series is over, but I would keep them as they are for now. Um, it'll make it easier. So if you, unless like, if you don't own a collar, if your dog, I don't own any collars, all my dog has is harnesses. I don't want you to go out and have to buy something new, but remember what I'm teaching you are some foundational layers. If you're familiar with my, uh, five C pyramid, we're working on awakening that connection with the dog. We're working on that. And so there's a lot of intentional actions and conditioning that I'm going to ask you to do. And would it be okay to do this with a harness? Maybe, maybe not. 
So I would go, I think it's great to do it with a harness after. And we've actually done it with the, the puppy belief with a harness, but I would not start with a harness. Okay. Um, now I've lost where I was. Here we go. Uh, I eliminated luring about a year ago, but still the dog checks my hands each time I call him and he comes to me. My mechanics thoughts. Um, I think that your hands are conditioned to be, have massive value, right? Because they used to carry the cookies. And so I would go back to the kangaroo pouch. <laughs> I'm sticking to calling it. Does anyone else out there call that a kangaroo pouch? Um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Would love any tips for playing these games when your dominant hand is injured in a splint. Hey, you know what? This is a great opportunity for you to become more ambidextrous because dog training is an ambidextrous sport. You need to become all of you listening to this. Don't wait till you're injured. You injure your hand tonight. When you brush your teeth, you brush them with your non-dominant hand. Start doing things like that. I, I actually can write with both of my hands and I, and I was not born like that. It long story, but I started when I was 12 doing things with my non-dominant hand. That's what I wanted to do. Throwing things with a non-dominant hand. Dog training is a sport where we need to use both hands. Is it appropriate to play the game while out walking without the message getting garbled? I w I'm hundred percent okay with you playing it. I would prefer you not teach it out in on a walk. All right. Because learning happens best in a, an environment that is very neutral, as neutral as we can get it. And generally that means your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen, maybe if there's, as long as there's no other dogs or people as distractions. Impulsivity uh, gets in the way. He really wants the treat toy or whatever I'm using. And he will try to predict what I want him to do. Consequently, he ends up jumping up and I lure him away. Uh, Linda, practice your mechanics without the dog, set up the video so that you are boom, boom. I, I mean, boom, boom. And you can work at just bringing your hand out. And, and if the dog then jumps up and tries to grab your, like, I wasn't going to do anything. I was going to like scratch my head. No, I didn't invite you to do anything. So get faster when you're going to do it and then do shout out to Gene Donaldson, the rule outs that this doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean you're getting a cookie. How do I train four dogs when I can't do one on one training? They are inseparable puggles. Uh, I'd work on the separation then, Summer. I would, with my own dogs, I taught them to jump on a couch and uh, maybe puggles. I bet you puggles snuggle somewhere. Puggles are snugglers. So you get them up there and then you call one dog off. I think I did a podcast about this. Yes, recently. I think it's one podcast number 180 or 179. So check that podcast out, how you can train more than one dog. It might even be like 181. I don't know. Uh, Sid, will the Connect the Dog series help me? Of course, Sid. It's going to help everyone with a reactive dog. How do I stop my dog from crazy barking at wildlife moose elk beer? beer? <laughs> my dog's a real beer barker. All right, I'm going to go back to this graphic. So wildlife, elk, beer, bar, bear, they're all challenges that produce are, are in the, I would say the complexity, high challenge area. We're working on the lowest level of connection right now. So you want to build in layers of understanding and therefore I would minimize the exposure to wildlife while you're working on that. All right. So yes, it's a challenge, but it's a possibility. So one of the byproducts of games like this, so I'm speaking from our recaller students. We have so many people who come to us who join recallers and they say, our dog, my dog is reactive. My dog's fearful. My dog uh, is leash aggressive. And I never tell people, this is a program to work through reactivity. Yet so many of our students are able to work through reactivity because it creates environmental neutrality. And those other things just are not important. Plus our whole entire focus is on building confidence. So you need to work up one, like the, the, I'm, I'm going to give you some games through this Connected Dog series and you need to evaluate where you were last month and where you are today. 
and I bet there will be some changes. Okay. Um, where did my questions go? Um, okay. Where did you, did you give me some questions? Okay. More questions. Judith, uh, have you done a podcast on the gap? I would like to learn more about why, why dogs learn in the gap. I believe I have. I honestly, from the top of my head, can't tell you um, a podcast unless Linda, do you know my podcast episode? If Shugal was on, she would know. If you go to shapebydog.com, there's a very, very good chance if you do a search in our search there, it will give you the podcast episodes. So Linda, maybe will do that right now for me. Uh, Cassandra, why did you change to adding a cookie? Because I want to build value for the word cookie. I'm using it. I started doing it with um, this and belief. And I've seen a real impact on it. So uh, you, you can, and as I told our recaller students, you can keep doing some without, but I really want that the, to classically condition the, the marker word cookie. Um, when playing collar grab, can you only reinforce, when playing collar grab, can you only reinforce with food? Is it possible to use a toy? Sure. You can use a toy. It's just harder to hide that. And it's harder to get in as many repetitions, but it certainly is possible. But what I would be doing if I had a dog who wasn't interested in food, that's what I'm assuming. And that could be a wrong assumption on my part. It could be that your dog is on a special diet or can't eat food. But if it is just that your dog's not crazy about food, I would use the toy to condition the dog's love of food. That's what I would do. From Heidi, what do you do if your dog won't take even high value food as reinforcement? We play a lot of games using his daily food, but he loses interest very quickly. So we want to stop games before they lose their interest. That's a biggie. And when you're playing games, mix in their regular food with the, uh, the rewards that you're using so that they go, I'm not eating my breakfast or dinner because I, I was going to hang out and get these really good cookies from you. That's an important one as well. From Mel, when do you phase out the cookies? So we're working on a connection. I don't phase out cookies until I've worked all the way through the complexities. I might fade out cookies with the easy games, which I'm calling these foundational con connection games. So, but I would, if I, if I went to grab for my dog's collar, I might like give them a scruff up after they're like, yeah, I'm loving this game. Okay. So the, the advice I have is do not be in a massive hurry to drop the reinforcement, right? Like, so I gave the example, like right now we're giving them cash. If you have a credit card on you that has an empty balance, that's the same thing as cash. So we can transfer the value from cash to like to a credit card. And then there's like gold bars. And then there's things like um, a house that represents cash, that rep, that rep, represents reinforcement. And so with what we're doing with our dogs is right now, their base reinforcement is food. And what I'm trying to help you guys do through this is not, not have the value be ending with the food. And so I know I, I'm, I'm swimming upstream when I say, if you lure everything with many dogs, it's very difficult to ever get rid of the food. And so that's why I'm encouraging you to think about, am I transferring value with what I'm doing? And once you have that transfer of value, so for my own dogs, reinforcement starts on food, gets transferred to tug, gets transferred to walking beside me. That is a, a hugely reinforcing position, gets transferred to going for swims or other activities. So you, you work, you work that over time, but you have to get off of the food as lures to, to get to that place. Um, should we be doing, and, and, you know, people say, oh, my dogs, we would never go to work without getting paid. So why do we expect our dogs to? But I think with our dogs, we need to stop paying them in cash. So many people keep paying their dogs in cash, AKA food. We've got to move up to other reinforcers. That's the only way we can get away from carrying that sack of dog cookies everywhere we go. Um, okay. Thank you for that question, Mel. 
Andrea, should we be doing all the lessons every day or when we've mastered one progress to the next? I like to mix them up, Andrea. I don't, I think it's fun, more fun for the dogs to, to play one game and then mix it up and play in with another game. Um, what's the point of the collar grab? How well will this fit into a relationship? How will this fit in? Rod, it's a foundational connection game. So it seems really, really simple. But if you watch my most recent podcast episode, there is always a game within the game. So this is one layer of a game that you're learning. You are going to see as we move forward with the Connected Dog series where this builds into other games. 182. Yeah, one podcast 182 is the uh, Game Within the Game podcast episode. Um, sometimes she will start to move away. I have not continued to grab the collar. She just moves on and I try a bit later. But is this right or should I go in and grab the collar regardless of her reaction? I would make sure she's on a leash. And so if the dog is, you read the dog, right? Train the dog that's in front of you. If she's, she's saying, I'm a little worried, then make sure you have a high value reward. And also I would just start by like grabbing the leash and, and then saying cookie and giving her a cookie. And if she's like, I'm not taking the cookie, then we've got her over threshold and we don't want to do that. So we'll just take a break, come on back and just do cookie, feed, cookie, feed, and then touch the leash, cookie, feed, and then touch higher up the leash, cookie, feed. Very, very good question. Uh, that was V, not Val. I don't know. Did I say Val? Patty asks, once a dog has mastered the training, will she be able to do the trained games for anybody or only for the person who trained them? Anybody. Anybody can come off the streets. Uh, it's one of the things uh, the woman who comes and cleans the house, she loves getting my dogs to do things, and she's just blown away that they'll do anything she asks when she asks. So yes, it does because it's not reliant on a, the, the power we're teaching you power words and the power is in the words. It's not in the, I see cookies, therefore I'll do stuff for you. Those words have meaning. Therefore the dog will do things for you. Karen, I wanted to ask if your choice or technique will help with non aggressive reactivity. You know, it's like a FDA bottle label. I don't feel comfortable saying, yes, it will. But what I do feel comfortable saying, we have had 70,000 students go through our program and I have seen it work in all of our online programs, not just recallers, but I have seen it work exactly like that time and time again. So I don't want to, you know, say I, I ride a rainbow unicorn and everything is amazing when you play these games, I'm just stating for a fact what I've seen. And if you look at some of the videos that are in the, um, on the um, doggy flick site, you, you, you'll see that's, that's exactly what, what is happening. Chuck says, we've struggled with playing enough games since switching to raw. How do you determine how many calories versus treats versus how much raw they eat each day? We use raw as a reward when possible, but it's not always usable. I hear you, Chuck. I feed raw myself. Um, cook vegetables. And that's a great thing. And you could even like put it in a little bit of bone broth to give it some value if the dog isn't crazy about the cooked vegetables. So that is, that is one thing that I would recommend. Um, one of the questions that I, I saw on, on the site, people, uh, several of you are wanting to adapt the game. So can I do like with a, with a harness, can I do it with a, um, a different word. Can I do it without a word? Can I do it? And you're, you're trying to, and remember I said the people who have the best success are the people who come in as a blank state. I've seen it as world champions of dog training come in and pretend they're, they're, uh, they, they adopt a, a beginner's mindset and they just play the games as they are. And they, they, they absolutely excel because they are already have great technique in their, in their handling with their dogs. Brand new people, first time puppy owners have a brilliant success because they just play the game as they, this is an easy game. We started off with easy because we know that is what people want to do. It's like if you had a putting lesson with Tiger Woods and Tiger told you, this is how I putt. And you say, yeah, but Tiger, can I just hold it the putter like a hockey stick? That would that, that, that'd be fine, wouldn't it? It could but you're not going to get the results that we get. You're not going to get the results that all of our students get. You have to be patient, play through or not. 
it depends what your goals are. And so if your goals are to create your own thing, we have a standing joke here. People do SGBB, Susan Garrett, but better. So they take my games and they morph them into something that they're not. Nothing I can do about it. But what I can do is if I'm helping you bring out the best in your dog so that your dog has her best life possible, I am going to strongly encourage you to play the games as they are. Now, if you want to come in behind and say, listen, I've played your 40 recaller games and these four games, I think, I see where you are going. I see the foundation. I think that this would help you go. I'm, I'm all ears. I am not a control freak. I love having great dog training discussions with people. Love it. But I am going to say, wait until you've seen the rollout of where you're going. Um, and, and, and I'm going to share with you that the people get the best results, play the game as they are described. Okay. Um, I'm going to give away a Cato board right now. So it looks like this is how we do it. We look at all the people who, who um, shared. All of you go into a spreadsheet. We do a random number generator and the random winner of the Cato board. And we're going to send it to you. Well, good friend, they're good friends at Cato board. Well, um, Edith Gravel. Congratulations. And Christine Windsor and JB are getting Be Kind stickers. So if you three would write in to us at wag at dogsthat.com. And I will put that up on the screen because I think I can. Uh, somewhere up here. Boom. There you go. Wag at dogsthat.com. So for those of you, congratulations. Yeah. For those of you, there's Edith. Boom. And so now what I should have is I have, I should have one of these that um, give you our Facebook address. I don't. Hopefully there were some aha moments for you during today's session. And if there were, and you would like to jump over to our Facebook page and put that in the post under the big gem, then you're going to enter another draw where we're going to, and the, on our next live, we're going to give away a propel. I would say, I don't, uh, between a propel and a climb and a Kato board, those are the three pieces of fitness equipment I use the most with my dogs, bar none, for sure. Okay, so um, go over to our Facebook page, which is, I think it's facebook.com forward slash Susan Garrett Dog Agility. I think that's what it is, but I don't know for sure. Okay, I'm going to look at the comments and um, thank you guys for being here. I apologize for the technical glitches that I had. And thank you guys for Swaggy. I'm not, I haven't quite said goodbye yet. Thank you guys for participating in the first ever series at Doggy Flicks. And if for those of you who are have not joined Doggy Flicks, and would like to, I'm going to remind you, it's 100% free. It's a brand new platform where we will have dog training throughout the year. And a minimum of once a year, what I do is I put together a very involved training um, series that is intended to help my students see concepts in a different way. And I take that series and I share it with the world for 10 days, 12 days, something in that neighborhood. And it's 100% free. There's no obligation. I just, my, my team and I, we have a vision and we're on a mission to help dogs worldwide be better understood by their owners and for owners worldwide to have access to the best dog training possible. So we do, we, that's why we put out our podcasts every week. That's why we do what we do. And so if you would like to join Doggy Flicks, if you haven't, there it is on doggyflicks.com forward slash learn. And for those of you who are in Doggy Flicks, Keep practicing because episode number three uh, opens on Monday and depending on how the weekend goes, maybe we'll uh, get together over the weekend too. The series, when does the series close? I should know that. You know what? Uh, I believe it, the, the series will come down, I think, on the 17th uh, or the... The 16th or the 17th? 
I could be wrong, but I think that's when it comes down. But I'm not sure. Hold on. Um, oh, yeah, it is on that piece of paper. My team gave me this nice piece of paper with everything organized on it. It's right here. Look at that. In case anyone asks, Susan. So, um, it should be, very, oh, the 23rd. 23rd is when we are going to be bringing the series down. So you, you've got a little bit of time yet. Um, so take your gems. I see Victoria, that's a beautiful gem and bring it over to our Facebook page and post it there because unfortunately, this is a beautiful comment. Don't steal Victoria's gem. Use cookie over clicker marker for the color grab. It's a good one. So jump over. Don't steal that anyway. That's Victoria's. Go on over and put that over on the on the page. Thank you, guys. This has been a lot of fun. So we'll be back with another one of these lives um, next week. I think on Monday. Don't quote me on that, but we'll see you. Those of you on TikTok, I hope this was all right for you. Um, still several of you on, so I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. So jump on over if you're not if you're not in there yet. Uh, I don't know how to turn off TikTok. So you guys might be hanging out with me for the rest of the day. Okay, see ya. Uh, okay, see you guys. <laughs> oh.